Hello and welcome to our introduction to our CA online exam prep courses. We're using FIN as an example in this video, but the advice here is equally applicable for all of the courses from FIN, Tax, Audit, Math, and even Capstone, because the advice is the same, the structure is the same. Uh, so this video is equally applicable for all of the online exam prep courses. And the aim of this video is to give you an idea as to how to navigate the exam prep course, what's in it, what's some general advice, and just a welcome and introduction into the first series of videos. So the first thing is getting started. So to navigate the exam prep course, which includes exam walkthroughs, CSG content, and online quiz, quiz prep, you use this link sidebar to navigate. So over the side, you can quickly jump to on the page because it's quite long, there's a lot of content, exactly where you wanna go within the module. So let's say you wanna quickly jump to the online quiz prep. You can just click on that, and it's gonna take you all the way down to the quiz prep section. Or if you wanna jump quickly to the CSG, you can click on here and you'll quickly jump to the CSG and you can just get started on the chapter that you wanna watch. Alternatively, if there's a particular exam that you are practicing, you can click on that and it'll take you exactly to that particular exam. So that's how you quickly navigate and jump around and keep track of where you're up to within the exam prep course. So next is actually downloading the keynotes used in the videos because when we go through these videos, even some of the exam preps, we've got the Excel file sometimes of the, if there is some workings that we needed for the particular question, we'll have that in the Excel file. So you can just click on that and it'll download and pop up on your screen. Same with any PDFs or other templates which are used within the videos as well. For example, journal template and so forth. It really depends on the particular subject uh, that you're studying, it depends. And next is to read the article, how to pass the CA exam. So this is not only to give you some good high level tips about how to approach the subject and how to approach your studying, uh, but it also forms the basis of how you absorb this information down here. So you can access the article over here. So let's just quickly click through to that. So this is the article over here, five tips on how to pass your CA exam. So I'm just gonna to quickly touch on these because I wanted to um, highlight a few points but otherwise I recommend spending this. It probably takes about five minutes to read the full article start to finish. So the first thing is in order to do well in a CA exam, you wanna focus on doing as many past exam papers as possible. Uh, now some other tutors or teachers and even the CA themselves will advise you to not do that, to focus on just reading the CSG, maybe doing some practice questions. My advice is different, my advice is Let's focus on where the most marks are. So the most marks in your subject, if you look at how the marks are allocated, 80% of the marks come from the final exam, okay? That's where you should be focusing the majority of your efforts. You should be allocating your efforts proportionally to the number of marks. There's no point putting all your time and effort into the, you know, the online quizzes or focusing on the CSG and not spending any time doing CA exams because when you get to the exam and you don't do well, you only get a 40% you know, you might not pass the subject, but if you're gonna put your efforts proportionally into where the marks are, you've got a much higher chance of passing the overall subject and getting the most marks. So the other reasons we recommend you focus on doing as many past exam papers as possible is number one, there's a few tips and tricks in the exams which you don't learn. You don't learn from doing practice questions. You don't learn from reading the CSG. You only learn these tricks by seeing past year's questions. And once you've seen the mistake and made the mistake before and know what to look out for, next time when it does come up, you'll know to look out for it and you'll easily um, pick up maybe five marks for, per question just by avoiding those little tricks. And if you just go on and read the CSG, you're gonna lose those five marks. There's the first one. The second is, if you learn the types of questions, and they do tend to cycle, cycle the same types of questions. For example, in the tax module, Question one, you know, 80 to 90% of the time is a tax rec question. Um, and you know, you usually have a capital gains question, you might have an international tax question, you might have an FPT question, you might have a GST question. If you do three years worth of papers, right, you'll start to see a pattern in there. And it'll give you a good idea as to what to expect, okay? So the next piece of advice, and the reason why we focus on practicing past exams over everything else, is it teaches you time management. And I highly recommend you do at least a few exam papers under timed condition. The reason is there's a lot of content in a CA exam paper. 
And even if you know all of the content, even if you're the smartest person in the world in terms of CA, if you can't get it written out um, within the time constraints of the essay, it's the same as if you didn't know it, right? So time uh, is really important, especially given they don't allow you much time. So what we say is, um, as you go through the exam, you know, calculate how many marks per question or roughly, you know, how much time you have per question and don't spend any more time than that. Let's say you've, you've calculated it's 45 minutes and you end up taking 55 minutes. You know, you should have moved on at least five minutes ago, if not longer, if not on the dot, because what happens is you might get stuck on a tricky question that throws out your flow. It ruins your question two, your question three, your question four, not only because you have less time to complete an answer, but also because it puts you under pressure and then you're more likely to make an easy mistake or not pick up on those little tricks that we mentioned before. So what we say is even if you get stuck, even if you haven't finished your answer, just move on to the next question and come back to that tricky one at the end. And that's the same if you get stuck on something or if you think something's really hard, maybe just do questions two, three, and four, get those easy ones out of the way, or it might be questions one, two, and three. I'm not saying question, you know, I'm not saying one's harder than the other. I'm just saying if you get stuck on something or don't know something, just move on. And same with time. As soon as you get to that, that um, time that you've calculated, and agreed with yourself, move on. Don't spend any more time doing it. And you only really realize like how little time there is when you're actually doing it under timed conditions. Um, and you also realize, you know, you act different under stress. So you might, you know, it's a lot harder when you're under stress, you forget things. And also finally, it also allows you to actually practice using the materials. Let's say, you know, for example, we've given you a journal template for the Fin module. Actually going through and doing those questions teaches you not only how to use the template, and make those mistakes now rather than in the exam. But how to do it quickly. It also gives you the opportunity to like tabulate your notes and things like that. So there's many different reasons, right? But my advice is just to focus 80% of your time on doing these past exam papers, right? But that's where starting early is important because to be able to do the past exams, you should have a decent foundation of you know technical knowledge from the subject. So you should know the CSG, um, but that's not to say if you get two weeks out from your exam and you don't know anything, what I actually tell people is not to read the CSG and front try and finish it because what's going to happen is you're only just going to get through the CSG in those two weeks. You're not going to have any time to practice papers. What I would actually recommend, if you've only got two weeks out, just do as many past papers as possible because you're actually going to do better than someone who only knows the CSG because A, you know the tips and tricks, you know what kind of questions they ask, you know how to answer prior year questions, so it's usually the similar approach, similar structure with different numbers. Um, so you're generally gonna do better than someone who only knows how to do the CSG and doesn't know how to approach an exam. So, however, I always recommend people to know the CSG. So the only way to really get the best of both is to start the CSG learning as early as possible, finish the CSG learning as early as possible, and then start practicing exams as early as possible. And that's gonna allow you to cement your knowledge on the CSG uh, because it gives you more time to learn everything, but it also makes it, means you're going to do really well in that final exam because you're going to know all the tips and tricks. You're going to have good time management. You're going to know, you know, what kind of questions they're going to ask you. You're going to have really good notes, and they're going to be tabulated, and you're going to, have to know how to use them. You're going to ace that final exam. Um, so the next point is just having access to a really good critical file and templates. So we give you some of the templates. You can also purchase some of the notes um, from the CA notes and critical files over here. Um, that's up to you but if you know if you know all the knowledge in the exam then you don't need to refer to your critical file ideally you don't have to refer to your critical file at all in the exam that means you know your content really well um, but most people generally have to rely to it sometimes in that instance it's about being able to get to that information really quickly so it being tabulated really well being quite concise because uh, don't even bring your CS I mean have it nearby but aim to never refer to your CSG in an exam you're just not going to have time to flick through the CSG. You're going to be wasting time that should be spent writing and getting marks. So if you're spending your time flicking through your CSG, you're doing it wrong. And that leads on to our point about managing time, which I've already covered already. So, you know, you've got a very limited amount of time. You just don't have time to be, you know, doing other things. It should just be writing. If you get stuck on anything, move on. If you find yourself flicking through the CSG, move on. Next is practicing your weak areas. So everyone's got a natural tendency to kind of focus on those areas and those topics that they, you know, they're really good at. Like, for example, you might really know, you, you know capital gains and you know it really well. So you, when you go through the exams and you start seeing capital gains questions, 
you've got a natural tendency to be biased towards doing those because it makes you feel good, it makes you feel comfortable and prepared for the exam. But what happens when they throw out a question that you don't understand? So we feel uncomfortable going through this stuff and we say, oh, they probably just won't ask us that question or, you know, I'll play my luck. But, you know, most of the time they do ask you a question on those difficult areas. So try and be honest with yourself and figure out what do I really struggle with or what do I really not know? And then you can watch our exam prep CSG content videos on those topics. Just watch them over and over again if you need to. And if you have, if you know the topics, some topics really well, like if you know capital gains really well, you don't need to watch our video on it, right? You understand it. I mean, it might be helpful to watch everything if you've got the time to do it, just in case you thought you were doing something right when you weren't. But if you don't have time, and most people don't with busy lives, you know, they've got work and, and friends and so forth in a short trimester. Um, so that's why for the last tip, I always recommend people start studying early. Don't leave it two weeks before the exam, although it's not the end of the world if you do. Just try and study early. Like if it's if it's if if you can start in January or even December, for the semester or trimester one, do that. Um, and if you can never watch our videos on two times speed, kind of absorb that content really early. Try and get through the CSG as early as possible so you can start focusing on your final exams. So that's a quick run through of the um, how to approach the CA exam. So you can access that article over here within your course or via the blog up the top of the page. Now I just wanted to give you some final thoughts on how to actually go through and use the online course. So my recommendation, if you haven't picked up on it already, is to probably start off with the CSG. So go through these videos first of all. If you can, watch every single video. You can just click here and play it. Um, and then maybe when you go to your settings, you can put it on double speed if you can keep up. If not, you can watch it on single speed and just you know watch it while you're at work or watch it while you're doing chores and the train, whatever you're. Try and get through as many of these as you can. Although if you're two weeks out from your exam, um, I probably wouldn't do that. Probably just watch a couple of the videos on the harder areas. For example, business combinations, you know, accounting for subsidiaries, equity accounting. They're probably the hard ones, and and skip the air, the ones that you are comfortable with. And then what I would recommend doing is focusing on these exam videos. So actually going through in detail, watching these as many times as you can. So actually going through the past exams, and these show you. You know how do you actually approach it here's an example workbook that you can use to approach it um, you know here's the exam you can download it and have a look um, and it'll just show you how to use the template how to approach the question you know what's the thought process that you should you should be going through because it's quite difficult when you're reading question under pressure from the time and the fact that you're in your final exam with a lot of marks to actually read through it and you know first of all figure out what topic it's talking about picking up on like small little tips and tricks which they do leave these little red herrings and traps within the question. So making sure that you're actually picking up on that, making sure that you haven't forgotten anything, both from the perspective of reading through the question, remembering it, and then when you're actually writing out the answer, forgetting it then, or alternatively, there might be a, a step which you actually have to follow, which doesn't quite click in the exam, um, and you actually have to you know, look at your notes or look at the template or just slow down and think, am I missing anything? Am I supposed to do anything? So these videos will really go through that in detail and help you with that. So just to quick, quickly recap, I recommend starting off with the CSG if you have time, starting this early so you can learn this in detail. Uh, and then maybe, you know, maybe four to six weeks out from your exam, just going through these videos in detail in regards to the exams. And of course, once you actually have your online quiz, you can start practicing uh, some of our practice questions, which you can follow through on these links to get to that page. So hopefully this helps. And now you can get started by clicking on the CSG Explained and getting started on video one. Hope you found this video useful and I hope you find the rest of this course really useful as well. If you do find the course helps you with your uh, final mark and you find the videos, you know, make your CA program a little bit easier, please do recommend us to your friends. Uh, we really appreciate when you refer us, you know, we uh, try to make uh, you know everyone's lives as easy as possible we try and improve the quality of the CA candidates coming out of the program that's our passion so if you can please give back to us like we try and give back to you by helping us grow our business it would be really really appreciated thanks again um, for your patronage on the website we really appreciate you coming back and good luck for this trimester in your subject we know you'll do really well as long as you remember all of the advice we've given you understand the content and do as many past exam papers as possible. You should be good. Don't stress. It's not, it's not too hard. So good luck, everyone.